Hey guys, it's Flip, and today I'm going to do a review and test of this new Ego Select Cut XP mower with Speed IQ self propelled technology. Alright, guys, so here it is. This is the new Ego mower with Speed IQ. About a month ago, I did an unboxing and first look video on this, but I didn't really have any grass growing in yet. Well, I do now, so I'm going to go ahead and do a test and review on this mower. This is model number LM2167SP as a kit, and it is LM2160SP as the mower only. So here's the plan for this video. I'm going to put this mower through two different tests. First, I'm going to test out the torque. We're going to cut some long grass and see how much power it has. It says it has 8.3 foot-pounds of torque, so we'll see how it holds up. The second test will be a time test. It says in the manual it'll cut for approximately 90 minutes on regular blade speed. So we're going to just do a normal maintenance cut and we'll see how long it'll cut with this new 12 amp hour battery. Then we will take a detailed look at the Speed IQ feature and how it does with stopping, starting, turning, and transitions. A lot of people have asked me about that in the comments of the first video, so we'll take a detailed look at that. Also, while I'm doing these tests, I'm going to go over what I like and don't like about the mower. But what I'm not going to do in this video is go over every single specification of the mower. If you want to see all of that information, I covered all of that in detail in the first look video, which was 12 minutes long. And I'll put a link to that first video in the corner right now. In all transparency, Ego did send me this mower to test out, but I'm going to be very honest and give you my thoughts about this. So let's get into it. So first of all, I'm going to test out the torque of this mower. It's got 8.3 foot-pounds of torque and a turbo mode, and I'm going to put that to the test against the bottom part of my yard here. As you can see, I've been letting this grow all spring. I have not cut it yet. I've been cutting the top part of my yard, but I have not cut the bottom part yet, so I can use it for this test. I've been testing out this extended runtime blade a lot over the past few weeks and this mulching blade, mainly edging around the outside part of my yard. But today I'm going to test out this high lift blade, which is mainly for bagging or side discharging. And we're going to side discharge since this grass is so long. So to give you an idea how long this grass is, it's kind of patchy, but in some of these patches, it's well over a foot long, as you can see here. Some of the lower spots, it's maybe six or seven inches. In most of the yard, I'd say it's in this eight to nine inch range. But there's plenty of other high spots around like this that are up to about a foot long. So we'll go ahead and pull out this mulching plug that I've been using and attach this rear side discharge chute. So our deck height is set at level seven, which is three and a half inches. And our battery is at a hundred percent at the start of this torque test. So we're going to try cutting this whole overgrown part of this yard and we'll see how it does. So there's two sounds you can hear as the mower is running there. You've kind of got that high pitch whiny sound. That is the self propel motor running. And then you can hear the actual blade spinning. So to start off this test, we'll just have the blade speed set at normal and we'll see how it does against this long grass on that normal setting. And then we'll bump it up to turbo and see if it does any better or if we notice a difference on that setting. So far as you can see this mower is plowing right through this grass. One thing that did happen is the discharge chute fell out as you can see me right there putting it back in. And here it's falling out again already which is kind of a dislike as far as this discharge chute goes. One thing I do like about the discharge chute is that it does not stick out past the side of the deck at all. So you can go right up against trees and fences and cut right up against it on both sides of the mower. And I did kind of figure out the trick is you got to really make sure that chute is pushed in all the way and kind of pull back and down on that discharge door and it'll kind of snap into place and it's spring loaded so it'll hold it better. Having said that, it still did fall out one other time while I was cutting the rest of the yard, but it did stay in better. So what I had cut so far in the video, you can see I had used 20% of the battery, so there's 80% left. And it's cutting just fine on normal, but I'm going to go ahead and move it up to turbo just to see if there's any difference in the cut. So 
So it's plowing right through this on turbo even easier. And there goes the discharge chute again. I think part of the problem with that is you've got a system set up to be easily changed. It's meant to be switched easily between side discharging, bagging, and mulching. So it's just not real permanently affixed to the mower. Um, it's just kind of being held in place by the discharge door. So it just kind of is part of the deal. But so far, I'm really impressed with the power of this mower. You can see it's not having any trouble at all with this long grass. It's got 8.3 foot-pounds of torque, which is more torque than any other Ego mower besides the LM2156SP, which is the one with the touch drive. And as you can see, it's not having any problems with the height of this grass. It's not bogging down or anything. Something else I like about this mower that separates it from all the other Ego mowers is that this is the only model that has eight cutting height settings instead of seven. This is the first model that'll go all the way down to one inch and then all the way up to four inches. The other models will go down to about one and a half inches. It's also the only model with the single latch handle fold down system. All the other models have a latch on both of the side rails. It's also the first one that comes with the phone holder that you can attach to the handle. And since we're on the topic of torque, I'll go ahead and show you how it does against some leaves. This is a clip from my first look video where I did a big leaf mulching test. And as you can see, it does a good job mulching up leaves. So back to the bottom of the yard here, we're almost done. I'll go ahead and show you the finish. All right, that's it. We got the whole bottom half of the yard cut now. It was pretty overgrown. As you saw, it was about a foot in some places down to six, seven, eight inches in some places. And we got all that cut, most of it in turbo mode. And we're down to 30% on the battery so we use 70 percent of the battery so that's pretty impressive as far as the power goes and as far as the battery lifespan goes so next we're going to switch over to the time test and we're going to see exactly how long this battery will last on normal blade speed but first i'm just giving this deck a little cleaning after cutting all that long grass and then i'm going to go ahead and take off that high lift blade and we're going to switch over to the mulching blade for the time test we're going to mulch just because that's how i will normally cut with this mower and i will have a video on the exact process for how to change these blades coming out at some point this summer i already took off the discharge chute and here i'm just putting in the mulching insert and we're ready to go okay so we're cutting on deck height six which is three inches with the blade speed on normal and self propel on auto Let's see how long it lasts. So one thing I like about this mower is how quick you can switch it between mulching, bagging, or side discharging. And you saw how quick I just switched it over to mulching there. But it comes with four blades total. You've got an upper blade that's always installed. And then you can switch between the mulching blade, the high lift blade, or the extended runtime blade. Okay, after cutting the front, uh, it took almost 12 minutes. Battery is only down to 90%. So let's go around the side of the house. So here I am cutting the side yard along the side of the house and the deck. And after finishing this, I realized I had forgotten the little strip up front by the street. So I went back and cut that little front part of the yard. And after doing that, I had been cutting for a total of about 26 minutes and I had 80% of the battery left. So moving on to the backyard, at the top of my backyard, the grass was a little bit shorter than the front. So I decided to drop the deck down to two and a half inches, which is level five. After cutting this little area, I had been cutting for a total of 31 minutes and 45 seconds, and I was down to 74% of the battery life left. Now let's see how far we can get cutting the rest of this backyard. So let's continue the time test, but first of all, just know there's a lot of variables that determine how long a battery will last. You've got the density and length of the grass, whether or not there's any moisture present and how low you are cutting the grass. Those are all gonna play a factor in how long a battery lasts. So we'll see how long it lasts. Again, the manual says the battery will last for approximately 90 minutes on normal blade speed. And if that's true, this new 12 amp hour battery and turbocharger are a game changer because it will charge this 12 amp hour battery in 75 minutes. So if it will run for 90 minutes, you could have two batteries. Granted, that would be expensive. These batteries are $600 each, but you could charge one while running the other and swap them back and forth and cut all day. The model just below this one in price, the LM2156SP comes with a 10 amp hour battery. So that is one advantage I'm seeing to this mower so far is that it comes with this new 12 amp hour battery. 
and the turbocharger. So at this point, you can see I've cut about the top third of the backyard or so, and finally starting to put a little bit of a dent in this battery. Been cutting for uh, about 51 minutes, and the battery is down to 30%. So some other things that I like about this mower, first of all, I really like the digital screen. I hope that's something that's here to stay for future Ego models. It'll tell you how much battery life you have left, what blade speed you are in, whether or not you have the self-propel on. There is a load indicator that'll show you how much of a load is being put on the mower, and it'll show you whether or not the headlights are on. I really like the three blade speeds that this has. You can run this in Eco mode, normal, or turbo. And I like that there are no wires running up the side rails. I have a lot of bushes and thorns along the bottom of my yard down there and a wire can get caught up in that. So it's nice that they ran the wiring inside the side rails on this model. Okay, the battery finally died. Hands in the air celebrating because I was tired of walking. All right, we're out of juice. We are at 0% battery and it cut for an hour and eight minutes. So it did not make it to the 90 minutes that it says it does for the normal speed, but I wanna point a couple things out. First of all, this grass is a lot longer than I thought. At the top of the hill, I moved the deck height down to two and a half inches because the grass was pretty short up there. And then I got down here and the grass was a lot longer and I did not move the deck back up. On top of that, I had the mulching blade on and I was running it on normal speed the whole time. So there are a couple ways to get more run time out of this. You can put the blade speed down to economy mode and you can also put the extended run time blade on. And I probably could have got close to that 90 minutes. But having said that, I don't think an hour and eight minutes with the mulching blade on on normal speed, I don't think that's too bad. So after the time test, I gave the mower a little cleanup with the blower and that's another like for me is how easy this mower is to stand up and then either stow away or just give it a quick clean off with the blower. You don't have to worry about any gas or oil spilling out. And then just for fun, I used Google Maps to measure the square footage that I was able to cut and it came out to about 15,000 square feet. Again, that was on mulching mode on normal blade speed. Now one last thing and then I'll get to the speed IQ feature. So when I got finished, I walked back to the front yard and noticed a little bit of mohawks going on. And I think that was mainly a little bit of user error. I'm used to cutting grass with a 46 inch lawn tractor and I don't think I was quite overlapping this 21 inch deck enough. So I went back and gave this a double cut and it looked much better after that other than my little bit of weeds and clover I've got going on. And lastly, let's get to the speed IQ. Unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to put this in the dislike column. I think it's a really neat idea. I just don't think it's quite there yet. But I'll start with the positive first. If you're cutting in long straight lines, it is nice to not have to press in any type of button to make the self propel activate. And it's really easy to use. Having said that, if you need to do a lot of starting, stopping and pulling back on the mower like I'm doing in this clip here, it can be pretty herky jerky. It feels like it takes the sensors and motor a second to recognize that you're changing directions. And sometimes it's just a quick second, but that quick second makes you feel like you have to fight against the wheels. And that can be a little bit aggravating. You're trying to pull back on the mower and the wheels are trying to churn forward against you. I love cutting grass and I want it to be a stress reliever. And this system actually makes things kind of frustrating sometimes. If you have a lot of obstacles to go around, it's honestly easier just to turn the self-propel off. The mower only weighs 59 pounds, so it's pretty easy to use that way. So honestly, I kind of feel like I would rather just press a button or knob and set a speed, kind of like on the LM2156 SP, and then walk to match that speed as opposed to having the mower try to match my speed. But the advantage of this model is it does come with the bigger battery and the turbocharger, the digital screen, no wires, and a few other things and it has the same torque as the LM2156 SP. As of right now, these are the only two models that have that higher torque at 8.3 foot-pounds. I did get a little bit more used to the Speed IQ the more I used it, but the one thing I didn't like is when you're going up a little hill, you have to push hard to kind of get the mower going up the hill sometimes, and then when the motor engages, it kind of takes off from you. Then you almost have to run to catch up. If you can't keep up, then you lose that grip pressure on the handle, 
Then the self-propelled disengages and catches you off guard and you keep walking and the handle kind of smacks you in the stomach. Then you kind of have to reposition and take a step back and push hard to get the mower going again. I wasn't a fan of this. I just don't like fighting against the mower, but then again, it does fine on long straight runs. It's very easy to use in those scenarios. So if you don't have a lot of obstacles to go around and just an open flat yard, this could be a great mower for you. And the other option is just turn off the self-propel when you're in tight situations where you need to make a lot of transitions. I do love the power of this mower. It's quiet and it plows through tall grass no problem. And it's awesome not having to mess with any gas, oil, filters, or spark plugs. So that's it. If you're shopping for a mower, hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, please hit the thumbs up button for me and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.